Worthington is the production designer. Emmy, he's an Emmy nominated production designer who's yeah. done a work on the Apple comedy series Mythic Quest. I'm at Noel from Gold Derby to ask him what is different about Mythic Quest than anything else you've ever worked on. Well, I uh, interesting question. I've never done half hour comedy before. Uh, oh, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I'm I've done I did feature films as an art director, and then I did a bunch of one hour streaming, premium cable, all that kind of stuff. And so this came up uh, through a friend of mine, Matt Shackman, who's a director. He knows Rob, the showrunner, and said, hey, go, you know, we were going to do a feature. It fell apart. He said, hey, if you want to work, go talk to Rob. You need somebody on this half hour thing he's doing. And he said, oh, he, he did Sunny. Uh, it's always Sunny in Philadelphia, which I love. Mm. That's, you know, it's like a yeah. cult classic. What a great piece. I said, well, that sounds really interesting. So anyway, I met with Rob, and they hired me to do this show. So uh it's different just in the format but it's also different because of the way rob runs a show and who he is um you know he does that kind of brilliantly comic dystopic thing that happens in in sunny which is fantastic uh and he's doing a it's different mythic quest is, is different but it, there's a certain there's a certain aspect of that here too and it's uh it's it's really fun it's one of the most it's, it, I've had more fun on this than I've had on anything in a long time. Mm. Uh, what What was the most, uh, if you had so much fun on it, what was the most fun thing for you to design and work on? Well, we did this office. So um, we, it, it, basically it's a gaming company, right? Mm. So yeah. and it's, been, and it's been in existence for maybe a decade, something like that. Super popular, it's like the best. And or not the best, it's the most popular game in the world. And um, so this this, all, we had to design this office that was based, um, well, in large part because uh, because a, a gaming company was involved in the production of it, uh, Ubisoft, in, uh, you know, out of Canada. They were great. And so we had access to a lot of, like, here are photos of what our offices look like, other gaming offices. So we sort of compiled all that and then came up with this kind of cool design. But it had a lot of big super graphics in it of their of these gaming characters that are in the mythic quest game that are kind of almost like avatars for the, for like Ian Grimm, the, the the character that Rob plays in the show and Poppy Harlow who's who's his second and all that so a lot of fun sort of in comedy you have an opportunity to go a little bit bolder a little bit bigger with stuff so we were able to take what would otherwise maybe be a boring office and make it a little more interesting so that was that was super fun yeah what what's a what's what's a choice you made over the course of the season that you're most sort of proud of or you think was really cool? Um, we and this is a combination of a couple of things, but the main thing in the office there's this um, uh, Ian's office is like raised up about every uh, 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 you know above everybody else's, which is really fun. And I, I don't I mean it was sort of a combination of Rob and I coming up with that, but this idea. Because he's this sort of an egomaniac, um, mm-hmm. essentially, uh, and a narcissist. And, you know, again, it's, it's, it's one of those characters that Rob does so well. And so this idea of him sort of having this platform in which he lords it over everybody was just a really, it's such a simple idea in a way, but it worked beautifully and they used it all the time in the show. So that was really, a, that was really fun to, to do. Um, and, it, and it worked beautifully. Yeah, like the, the, the cool thing sort of about that is because the video game that they're designing is this medieval themed yeah. um, game, uh, Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet. Uh, and like he's sort of like lording over them like the king of the, of the, that, of the it, yeah. It, yeah, I mean, it's a, the whole thing is a metaphor for the game itself. We have this big, yeah. you know, medieval warrior and there's, a, there's literally a super graphic of a medieval warrior from the game on the front of his office. So, yeah. you know, if you, were, if you weren't aware of his, his position and who he thinks he is, there it is. And again, in comedy, you have that opportunity to do this sort of broader yeah. thing, which are really, really fun. Yeah. And that, that character uh, bears Rob's or, or Ian's, <laughs> Ian's image, right? Uh, kind of, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not, I mean, I, it's not, I don't know if it's directly derived or not, but it was yeah. stuff that Ubisoft gave us, but yeah, I mean, essentially. And at the end, in the last episode, they took the opportunity to put, you know, he's got the big, you know, picture of him on the front of the office and he promotes Poppy at the yeah. end, right? Mm-hmm. Associate creative director. And then they, we put a 
another graphic next to him on the front of his office at the end. So you get yeah. this really fun. Um, so, so for people who are watching, I mean, it's not essential, but it, it just makes it, it yeah. just makes it more fun. And little Easter eggs like that buried in there that are really, that are really fun. Now I, I had a question. So you've got the big, the big artwork, the big sort of graphic yeah. of him or, or of the mm -hmm. gaming character, a uh, hero on the wall. And he's got a door or window that he comes <laughs> out of. To, uh, now that, that seems uh, that's that seems placed in the sort of crutch area of the character. Was that intentional, or is that was that a coincidence? <laughs> I just don't know if I should comment on that. It's a bit of both. When we put yeah. it together, you know, we put it together. And we had we had that the, the, the kind of one of the things about the office is you have these beautiful sort of veneer wood walls with like square windows in them in different sizes. Just because it's kind of it's kind of pretty and it kind of represents you know in a way they're like little pixels and there's little yeah. you know ties that way. But when we put that together, we had the wall and it was like okay, that's a nice composition. And then we got the gaming character, we stuck it on top, and it just sort of landed. Let's just say in a very uh, uh, specific place. So it was both <laughs> accidental. And once we saw it, we're like, well, we we have to do that. You have to so. Um, so that, yeah, that was great, uh, and worked out really nicely. Just, and there are little, you know, sort of happy accidents like that all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. You, you fell into it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. How, how, how fortunate. So um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what, did, what was the biggest, what's been the biggest challenge for you in approaching this series and approaching this work? Well, it's always, there's always budget and time. You know, those are always the things about it that were, and you always have those challenges. But, you know, they were, so much of the time you go to these things and people, don't, the producers are, are a little edgy about it. are like, well, you know, you know, you say, how much money do you have? And they go, well, I don't know, we're working that out and so on. Here, uh, Chris Mirnoff, our, our wine producer, I came in and I said, look, how much money do you have? He told me. So I was like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, well, it seems like maybe a little low for what we're talking about, but we, we know the ballpark. And so yeah. you come in with that. It, that part was so much easier than a lot of shows. It was great. They were just really, and everybody on that show, totally straightforward. They're really just good people. They're really honest and just easy to work with. So that part was great. So more, more and more than that, it was just time. The, there was always compressed time because it was a pretty big office and we had to put it together in like, I don't know, something like five weeks design, you know, from the sort of the basic design phase to we're shooting. So that's always a challenge, but, um, you know, we didn't, it, it was it was a really good working environment. We didn't have any personality conflicts, didn't have any, again, real issues with the budget, didn't have issues with the studio. It was, it was like this dream job. So that was probably the most challenging thing. But even that, you know, we, we had a good crew and we got through it. So I, you know, um, and then the design challenges, of course, like how are you going to mm. fit this thing on a stage? Because we had a really relatively small stage and Rob wanted this thing to literally go to the edge of the studio and you have to have fire lanes and stuff just for safety. So we were, you know, just shoehorning in that much real estate that's workable into a space like that was a challenge, but that's fun. It's a puzzle, you know, that's what we do. Yeah. Do you ever, do you ever like as a production designer, like, um, like, uh, what was I going to say? Like, at, like create extra work for you to do if you have an idea like oh, and you go, oh why don't we add that to things or do you not have time for um no you always you're always thinking of little opportunities that might especially in in tv in film you know everything's everything's laid out for you right there's the script yeah. this is what they're asking for you just do it in 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 television streaming and the world we're in now it, it's series you may you're not going to have all the writing necessarily at the beginning so you're making a permanent set and you think about things that they might need you know uh, as opposed to just what's in the pilot script. So yeah, you I definitely do that to give them opportunities down the road to open it up and to, you know, more staging opportunities. And yeah, you can do whole scenes in here. Yeah, I definitely go there and try to add that stuff in if I can. It just because it it allows them so much more flexibility going forward rather than just saying, well, the pilot has this in it and that's all I'm going to give you. It doesn't, you can't do that in TV and really do the job responsibly. So I, yeah, I try to, add things yeah. in like that you know i think it's it's fun is there anything you added in mythic quest you can remember something that you um well yeah i think the idea of the like the the testing area the testing room for those guys for yeah. for um 
uh, is it Dana and Rachel? Mm. Was sort of more of a room, and I saw that more as a, I mean, it's different. It's still a room, but it's like this weird pod that has yeah. strange lighting, and you got that strange kind of two thousand one long strip of a window that looks in, and there it's like a bunker. So yeah. that was sort of conceived of as kind of uh, more of another office. And I said, no, nah, it should be something weird and other. And when you go in, the lighting is different and it just the whole thing is very odd. And it's where they kind of stick the drones that work on that sort of thing. Um, yeah. and they only have this one little slit to look out into the real world. And it really meant to me. To so things like that. Um, I mean, what we added, I don't know. I'm trying to think if I had anything specific. I think, you know, like the kitchen area. I just said, hey, we're going to need a lounge in a kitchen. You need that. Yeah. It's like that. And I don't think that was scripted. We just said, we got to have it because in any gaming or commercial production, if they're film production, they always have some sort of a lounge and a kitchen. And that just gives you another area to play a scene that, that works nicely. And, and you see a lot of scenes in that space in the show. Mm. Yeah, no, it's good. Uh, we're an awards website. We cover awards um, at Gold Derby. Uh, you have been nominated for... Uh, various emmy awards yep. and you've won and you've won for things like american horror story uh, mm -hmm. umbrella academy ugly betty uh you have um won uh directors guild awards for the umbrella academy and american horror story uh what was it like uh and, and ugly betty you, you know, for all those shows you won art director guild awards. right and we got emmys for that i got i've been nominated eight times for emmys yeah. i call myself the yeah. susan lucci the susan lucci of production <laughs> If that reference yeah. means anything to you, it's, yeah, I don't yeah, know if you yeah, get all my. If yeah. you know Susan Lucci or all my children in Australia, I assume you do. And she's yeah, yeah, great. I, yeah, I'm here in forever. Australia. And I, I think I think everyone, most people who are recall Derby and are in the forums there will know very well who Susan Lucci is. I would, yeah. I would hope you. I would hope you would. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, what is it like, and particularly winning those Art Director Guild awards? Like, what was it like to get that recognition from your peers? It's great. That's the better one. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that, should I? That's the one that means that it means the most uh, in, in the end, because you're getting it from people who appreciate what design is, what production design is. So that's always very, very special. So those, those mean a lot to me. It's not to mean that winning an Emmy wouldn't, but at this point, I'm kind of like, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not necessarily holding my breath. It'll be it'll be fantastic if I get it, but I do uh, have a special shelf for my art director guilds award, art directors guild awards. Yeah, yeah, and like the the Emmys are still other art directors that vote for that, so like it's still yeah. a peer a peer recognition thing. But the, uh, the the art directors guild is a much broader pool of art directors that are voting. Yeah, you know, and it, yeah. You know, and those things are always so mercurial because it, you know, the votes get split. And I mean, it's, yeah, it's, I, it's not, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just the nature of the yeah. that. And they, I have to say, the Emmys, given that they are, I think they must be the largest uh, in terms of the amount of awards they give. I can't think of any other. Oh, yeah. That gives that many away. Yeah. It's mechanic. The, just the logistics of it and dealing with all that, you know, in fairness to them, they do an amazing job. Yeah. Um, with that, because there's nobody that has the burden that they have with that. It's just the scale of the thing. It's huge. So, yeah. um, no, I'm, you know, and, you know, having eight nominations is not bad. If, if the worst thing you can say is you've got, you know, you've been nominated for an Emmy, but you didn't win it today, yeah. Yeah. you know, that's a first world problem. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you've been nominated for eight. So, like... Yeah, indeed, indeed. So, yeah. Um, and and to be you know singled out as one of those uh, the best works in that that field, whether you win or lose, is is fantastic. Uh, you won your first uh, art director's guild award for Ugly Betty, I believe. What take us back to that moment? What was it like when you announced the winner? Well, that was real. That, that's probably my favorite moment, just because that show was completely unlikely. Um, I mean, for so many reasons, it, it came late in that pilot season. Uh, you know, they just said, yeah, go ahead. And ABC just said, yeah, I guess we'll make that too. You know, we made the pilot. It, it wasn't a lot of, it, 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 the sense was like, yeah, we made that, you know, maybe it won't, maybe it will, maybe it won't go. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it has a Hispanic character. It's a female Hispanic character at its center, but it's meant to be, it's a mainstream episodic show. Very, very mm. unusual, not unprecedented. That's amazing. Yeah. 
the the world we created again sort of unprecedented for 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 especially for broadcast television just sort of the world of that magazine which is this fanciful thing you know that we pushed hard and the visuals to go to a certain place and the, you know, her living anyway the whole show is really special so um and then of course it, it blew up that that at, mm. at up front that season it was just like it was the show and then we yeah. premiered and it was 17 million viewers and i mean it was just crazy it was really gratifying so to win for that show in particular which seen which had a really a really steep hill to climb to get where it mm. where it landed was really satisfying because I feel that I, that's a really special show for me. Yeah, it's such a, it's a, such a distinct look to it as well. Oh, like yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, with with your work, but also the costumes and like the whole visual oh. sort of like uh, the visual experience that show has really stood out. <laughs> Super important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What um. Back to Mythic Quest. Uh, yeah. When you were talking with, uh, what what's it like? To you you liked it's always sunny in Philadelphia. You thought it was a cool show. What's it like to then go in and work for Rob on a show like someone who you've enjoyed his work, but you may have not worked with him before? He's well. The first thing that strikes you when you sit down in a meeting with him is he's he is really smart. He's a very intelligent person. Um, so. Which is not a surprise. Comedy is a hard thing to do well, mm, and yeah. in many respects, it's a more to me, it's a more intellectual form in a certain way. Formally, it's more sophisticated in a way that you, you know, it has really. It's hard. It's hard to do well. So he's both very smart, but he's also really intuitive, and he's as an amazing. I mean, the whole like a lot of those shows, but these guys in particular, he has some actors that are also writers that are also producers. And yeah. a lot of what comes out, it, it, we, the script is there, and it's a finished script. And then they riff on the script um, and come up with their own ideas kind of on the fly. And so watching him sort of develop an environment like that for his actors slash producers in some cases, or just actors, and, and nurture that so that these moments are really funny and spontaneous was really amazing. Um, he's just, he has a he has such an amazing touch with that um and it's why the it's why the shows have that particular feel um you know it's not just raw i mean but he leads it and a lot of it comes from him but it's also the people he he gathers yeah. around i mean he always puts together a kind of a, like the perfect cast which this has i think it's really really a great cast yeah and that's interesting you said you said you you feel like in in some ways comedy is more intellectual and mm -hmm. sort of is is it takes um it's hard really hard to do well do, mm -hmm. does that does that carry over to production design for comedy yeah i think it As, does i mean because because you've done both you've done comedy and drama so oh, yeah i've done yeah, both yeah, yeah. i find i find comedy in many respects is yeah you know, i mean drama is challenging in its own ways totally mm. another comedy because it is so much about a given idea or a thematic idea in a given scene. I mean, when it works, you know, especially American television, which you find, you know, our half hour comedies are where we have the dialogue about our, who we are as a society, if you think about it. Um, yeah. You know, not so much in the one hour, oddly, more now than it used to be. When you think of something like All in the Family, yeah. I mean, that's a social and political conversation going on for years in the mid 70s, you know, on TV yeah. and these half hour things. So. And and not that we're not that necessarily Rob's doing that politically. It's so much in like mythic quest. It's sunny, you know, a little more in a way I would say. But but you know, if you think about just what he did with this season, um, and then the design that has to follow, you know, we have to work with the design. Is he? Uh, I think it's uh, episode five, if I recall, where it's this flashback to the development of of a game. You know, this game mm -hmm. in the '90s, right? And it's a standalone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where our real characters only appear slightly around the edges. I mean, it's really bold and really interesting and talks about ideas of sort of commercialism and compromise and, and how that intersects with people's personal lives. And I mean, it's a really complex episode. And, you know, that, and it's still comic. It's still, it has a dramatic edge, but it has a comic edge as well. Writing that line and then having to come up with, reuse the, um, the set 
uh, you know, to, you know, because they occupied the space that Mythic West then came in and used. Um, yeah. So that all had to be redesigned with that in mind with Echoes, using the bones of the set and then adding the right elements for that one, the period of the 90s, and then, um, you know, but, but recognizing that it's the same space. Those sort of things are really tricky um, and hitting the right tone. So, yeah, I, I mean, comedy is, it's a challenge. I mean, I love it. I think it's, mm. you know, I think it's really fun to do. And I think people, I, 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 yeah, I think, that, oh, it's funny. It doesn't matter. It's just light. Who cares? It's just comedy. I, I don't think so. I think they're, yeah. I think they're really wonderful. Yeah. Well, Smart, thanks so much for talking to us today and uh, spending some time with us. Uh, all the best for the uh, upcoming Emmy Awards. Maybe you'll get another nomination. Maybe you'll win this year. Yeah. Who knows? You have, I have um, no idea. Yeah, um, and uh, the Art Directors Guild and all the other awards yeah. down the pipeline as well. Uh, you can go to goldderby.com, anyone watching this, to watch other interviews with award contenders and make your own predictions for the Emmys and other Hollywood awards. Thanks, Mark, so much. Thanks.